Namaste. When it comes to activating the subtle body and rising the Kundalini energy, the most powerful are the techniques of Hatha Yoga, but they are the most dangerous. So for our safety and well-being, it's important to know the boundaries of the practice. As the Kundalini energy develops, she brings with her extrasensorial manifestations and psychic capabilities. Are they grand? Are they accomplishments? They're trap. They're distractions. They come with the process, but we ignore them. That's the safe management of Kundalini. Kundalini is beautiful because through her, we shall understand meditation from a more real-life perspective. So when we attain high spiritual states later on, we remain grounded. We are still the same individuals in and out of awakening. It's just that we're more aware, cautious, content, resilient, kinder, and happy. Of the techniques in Hatha Yoga, the most sensitive are pranayamas. Breath regulation exercises directly affect centers in the brain responsible for controlling and regulating the subconscious. Our deepest and strongest fears and emotions and our karmic tendencies. And the most serious of them all is our perception of life and death. And we don't want to be interfering with the subconscious. Triggering the subconscious shall result in many psychological, mental, and even psychiatric problems in the future. Yes, overdoing pranayamas could cause psychosis. The kundalini energy, once she awakens, shall do the function of purifying the subconscious, and this happens during sleep. Therefore, sleep is important in our practice. We need restorative and restful sleep every day. I say between seven and nine hours. During sleep is where we drain the brain and during sleep is when the subconscious yeah, opens up yeah, and the kundalini energy pierces through the chakras of the subconscious leading to its purification without us interfering. Yeah. So what are the signs that Kundalini is happening? All right. For me, there are three. Number one, Nada, or the sound frequency. I attain my first Samadhi by listening to Nada. It's powerful for absorbing and dissolving the mind. Next, Yoga Nidra. After a period of time of listening to the Nada, the Kundalini energy shall rise as electricity covering our skin. Uh, Yoga Nidra is powerful for draining excess electricity out of a system. We don't need you know, too much. Yeah? So we need to drain periodically. Yoga Nidra cleanses the brain. Yeah? And finally, Radiance. Radiance is when we meditate and we can see this hovering light over our forehead with the eyes closed by the closed eyelids. The eyes are the windows to the soul. When we process less light, we relax the visual cortex of the brain, emerging yeah, the meditative centers in the inner brain. Therefore, during meditation, it's ideal to cover the eyes so our retina see less light or meditate in a dim or dark environment. These signs are safe. They don't interfere with the function of the nervous system and they don't disrupt the subconscious. So the moment you feel these manifestations, that's enough. All right. Slowly back off from the energy channeling practices of Hatha Yoga and then just do them shortly and sparingly. You might do them longer when you're doing your confinement or a spiritual retreat and where you limit your consumption of food. Therefore, you need more energy coming from the breath. And you could do that by doing the pranayamas longer. But in a normal situation, we just do them shortly. Yeah, the problem or the tricky part is really the mind. Our minds always think the more, the better. But in the science of yoga, the simpler it is, the best. Take care. Master.